Number one, we're here for the last little bit for the Earth-Sun-Moon system, and we've talked about phases, we've talked about where the moon came from, but one fun phenomenon we get to witness here on Earth are eclipses. Eclipses are when a body in space passes through the shadow of another body. And we've got two different types that we can see here on Earth. We can see a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. People usually get confused about which one is happening and what is being blocked by the other's shadow. What's an easy way we can remember that? Well, lunar means moon and solar means sun, so if it's a lunar eclipse, uh, the moon is being eclipsed, and if it's a solar eclipse, the sun is being eclipsed. So whatever the name is of the eclipse is what body is being blocked. So let's kind of look at the orientation between the Earth, Sun, Moon. And if you look at the setup here, you can see the Sun is cast its light out in space. And then what do we have behind? The blue dot is the Earth and the gray dot is the Moon. Well, what I can see is there are shadows that are being cast all the time by these two bodies. If I draw a ray of light coming from the Sun, it passes over the top of the Moon and if I take one from the bottom of the moon, it passes just below the moon, and right behind that region, there is a spot where no light reaches. That would be probably the most dark region I could ever find in space. Yeah, probably completely blocked from any sunlight. I do notice, though, that there's a lighter region there as well. What happens with the sun's rays there? So the sun's rays, if I take that same bottom ray and I take it to the top of the moon, I can see it passes off into space, and the same thing from the top of the sun down to the bottom of the moon. It looks like it's not perfect darkness, it's a partial shadow. The right. total shadow is that dark region, and the partial shadow is that, all the rest of that region. Well, if I remember my Latin correctly, uh, that uh, umbra means shadow. Like an umbrella. Right. So umbra is the total shadow. And then partial shadow is something called penumbra. So the way you can remember the difference between those two shadows is penumbra, P, partial, and umbra would be totally covered. So the same thing happens on Earth. You can see what's the difference between the Earth's umbra and penumbra versus the Moon's umbra and penumbra. Well, basically, it's just the size. I, the rays pass the same way, and you end up with the same basic setup. It's just a little bigger. Because the body is bigger. So we know that the moon passes around the earth every month and that means that every month we have a chance for the moon to pass in front of earth at what phase? Well that particular phase when the moon is between the sun and the earth is a new moon. And then if we were way back here this would be a full moon. So every time we have a full moon that means that we're going to have the moon pass into Earth's shadow? Mm, not necessarily unless they line up perfectly every time. So you can see with this setup here, or the Earth and Moon are at the bottom, and you can see their umbras cast out into space, and you can see that if the full moon is above the Earth, it's not going to pass into our shadow. Same thing if it's below the Earth. So let's start with the lunar eclipse. Where does the moon have to be for a lunar eclipse? Well, the moon's going to have to be covered up. So the only thing that can really cover it up there is the Earth's shadow. So it has to be inside of that. So when the moon starts to pass into the penumbra, we'll see a partial shadow start to go onto the moon. And then it eventually be fully eclipsed. So looking at the curvature of the shadow going onto the moon, we actually could tell that the Earth is a sphere. And when it hits totality, it should go completely dark. Well, you'd think it could go completely dark, but light rays bend around the moon and cause a little effect here that we can see uh, the moon looks red. Because when sunlight hits the atmosphere, blue light is easily scattered, uh, green light is easily scattered, yellow light is scattered a little bit less, but the oranges and reds can pass right through. Mm -hmm. They're longer wavelengths, and so they cut right through the atmosphere and they make it all the way to the moon. And so actually when you go into Earth's total umbra, you look reddish in color. If I'm looking at a lunar eclipse, is this safe to look at? Sure. Why? Well, because it's not direct light, it's reflected light. Where would I be standing? You would be standing in the space between the Earth and the moon, but on the Earth. So I'd be standing back here, mm -hmm. and if I'm not staring at the sun, that means I'm 
around midnight or so. Give or take. Give or take when the full moon is right overhead. So that's when we see lunar eclipses happen. They're safe to look at. You're not staring at the sun. Go ahead and stare at this all you want. Let's go for a solar eclipse. That means I have to block what? The sun. So if I block the sun, that means the moon has to be the thing that blocks the sun. And as the moon comes around in front, now we're lined up for a solar eclipse. What phase are we dealing with here? Well, now we're looking at a new moon phase. Okay, so new moon means I can't see any moon, no moon. So every time the moon gets in front of the sun, we should have a solar eclipse. Unless it's not quite lined up exactly right. So the angle of the moon's orbit is slightly tilted from that of the ecliptic. But now we can see the moon's small umbra is passing over the Earth. And if you're inside of that uh, umbra, then you get to see a total eclipse. So you can see that actually the path of totality is a lot smaller than the path of totality for the Earth. And you've got to be in that special zone for this to actually happen. We were lucky enough to see a partial solar eclipse last summer and we shared that with many 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 people that means we were actually in the penumbra as the moon's shadow went across us right we were about 80 percent totality so if you ever get the chance find out where the paths of totality are we'll leave links in here so that you can go to it and make sure you get in the path of a total solar eclipse i hear they're amazing all right so one last thing that the moon does to us is it pulls on us the Earth pulls on the Moon, how much does the Moon pull back on Earth? Exactly the same amount. Because of Newton's third law. And things that are able to move freely on our planet are fluids. Gases, liquids. The rocks are a little harder to shift around. I can't do it. If we know that the Moon pulls on Earth, I'm going to draw some arrows for how much force the Moon pulls on the Earth. What about this front of the Earth? Let's say it pulls with this strength. What about the middle of the Earth? Yeah, it's weaker because it's further away. So I'll draw a smaller arrow here. What about the back side of Earth? Even less. So the forces get weaker and weaker with distance. So the water closer to the moon can be pulled towards the moon. The Earth can shift over and the back side isn't pulled as hard. What about the top and bottom of the Earth? So they would be basically pulled the same as the middle, but at angles. So if we have that force at the top and bottom of Earth pulling at angles, you can see the water at the top and bottom of Earth is actually being squeezed inwards and forcing what we call a tidal bulge. Well, a tidal bulge is basically where the water on the Earth, or whatever fluid we're talking about, is actually pulled in two different directions. So people think then if we lose the moon, we lose our tides. Well, that's not true because the sun has an effect too. So if I click on include sun, you can see that tidal bulge got a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So that means that high tide is right here in the front, and high tide is right here in the back, where are low tides? On each of the sides. So on the sides where we have a low tidal bulge, we've got low tides. And what I'm noticing here is that uh, the direction of the sun is the same as the direction of the moon in this particular case. Does that have any special bearing? I don't know. Let's find out. If I hit run here and I let the moon move, I can see that that tidal bulge is shifting. The bulge is still pointing towards the moon more than the sun. Why? Well, the moon has more of an influence gravitationally. Because it's a lot closer to us. Mm -hmm. So the bulge does follow the moon and kind of keeps in line with the moon. So the tide doesn't really go in and out. What happens is you can see the Earth spins a lot faster than the moon does. So we actually spin into the bulge and then out of this bulge. And every time you go into a bulge, you experience high tide. High tide. So again, let's include the sun. Since we've made one full orbit, we know that tidal bulge is bigger now. And you said they were all lined up, so I probably have a really, really strong pull. But look what's happening to my tidal bulge now that we're getting to the quarter phase. Yeah, the bulge isn't as pronounced because you have gravitational objects pulling in two different directions. So I've got the moon pulling up, I've got the sun pulling to the right, and so the tides are eh. They're not so high, they're not so low. We just call them eh tides. <laughs> I like the word uh, a little bit better called neap tides. So neap tide, think of it like no tide. That's what's going on there. But if we get the Earth, Sun, and Moon to line up, which would be new moon phase or full moon phase, 
that bulge is coming back and that bulge is actually getting more and more pronounced. So what's going on here? Well, they're all lined up again, so you have a pull in basically in the same direction, front and back, and you're getting a much larger bulge. So we get higher high tides and lower low tides. Some crazy tides are like the examples of the Bay of Fundy, and they experience very, very large swells in their high and low tides. When they line up like this, they call it a spring tide because the water springs outward on either side of the earth. I like that name as well. So now we know how the moon looks, what phase you might be seeing, the shadows that are cast onto the moon or onto the earth, and why we get tides. So awesome. I hope you've enjoyed your trip through the cosmos with us. See ya.